What is up guys, I thank you very much for joining me for another video here on Degenerate Watch. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at something we've never taken a look at here on the channel before and that is Stolen Valor. And I'm actually quite surprised that I haven't covered Stolen Valor here on the channel before because these guys are some of the worst. Many of my viewers from the United States will probably be already familiar with Stolen Valor and it's actually a crime to be going around acting like this. And for those of you not familiar with what Stolen Valor is, it's the act of falsely claiming military service, falsely claiming a certain rank which was not earned, and can also include the wearing or claim of certain military awards or decorations that were never actually awarded. And a lot of these guys have various different reasons for doing it. Some are doing it for discounts in stores and different businesses, and others are doing it just for pure clout. It's an absolute disrespect to anybody who's lost their life or got a life-changing injury through serving their country. And when these guys end up bumping into somebody that has done military service, that has a family member in military service, that may have lost somebody in military service or has had a life changing injury as a result, they don't take too kindly when they bump into these guys. And normally what happens is they'll go up and confront them and straight away they'll pick apart their BS story. And it can be quite amusing to watch them being put in their place by somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And hopefully by being called out in public, these guys will stop this sort of disgusting carry on. Uh, sir, uh, are you active duty? No, I used to be. No, I used to be? Used to be? Uh, I, came, I came out in 92. Okay. okay. But I got children. Okay. That okay. Um, serving right now. Well, uh, why are you, uh, why are you in uniform? Because it keeps me warm because I drive trucks. Okay. It's a total fabrication. Okay, yeah. I understand that, but that's what Jack's for, you know? Yeah, oh, really? oh please come off it now don't tell me this man's only after figuring out what jackets are for i know they say you learn something new every day but this is just pathetic with an iq like that there's no way this guy ever set foot inside a military barracks in his life yeah yeah because i got i got a uh, you know that heavy that real mm -hmm. big heavy thing yeah. and i have that in my truck yeah. but i keep, i wear this <laughs> Oh. You know, because it keeps me warm. Yeah. Please, sir, you're wearing military fatigues. They're not a pair of long johns. What do non-military people do? Just freeze? No, I'm not buying this. You don't tactically prepare for frost. Utter rubbish. Well, my problem isn't you staying warm in it. Like, I've had friends that have died in this, you know? You know? I understand. Yeah. And for you to be wearing it right now because you're warm, isn't the right reason to be wearing the uniform at all. Oh, well, there's many reasons why I, I oh, wear it. No, it's, it's not just clothes. You can just, you know, I'm going to wear this today. I'm, I'm going to be cold. You know, that, that uniform like, signifies, like, for the men and women that fight and die for our country, you know. Well, I have three children that yeah. are currently doing that now. Yeah. So. Oh, I didn't know it worked like that, that you just had to have kids in it and you could just wear the uniform. I wonder does that work for everything else? I hope I have a son and he becomes a fireman. I've always wanted to rock up into Tesco wearing a full fireman's uniform, breathing apparatus and everything. Yeah. I have good. one I have one daughter. She's mm. in the army. And Well if that's the case. Are, she, her yeah. company is on standby to go to Ukraine. Yeah. So I'm praying that that fool don't do what he mm. everybody thinks he's gonna yeah. do because, oh. you know I don't disrespect it, trust yeah. me when I do. That's mm. why I don't have the patches and all that. I just moved them. But Believe me when I tell you, I respect it. Just like I respect the word of God. Period. Well, so yeah. well, I, I respect I that. Never, I would yeah. never disrespect this this here. Because I know what it's saying for and I know and I know how sensitive it is. So like I said, I have three children that's currently serving. One in the Marine, one in Navy, and the other in the Army. And I have family members. That have, was in Afghanistan and, and all them places, the, um, over there in Iraq and all them places. I got cousins and all of them. So, I understand. Is it just me or does that story sound a little ropey? Oh yeah, I got cousins, friends, nephews, everything over there in Iraqistan. None of that are saying you respect the uniform or the word of God or anything excuses what you're doing. Yeah, I understand. But... <laughs> <laughs> that's and I wear I just, this. So a lot of times I wear this to remind myself mm -hmm. that what I'm enjoying to be able to do now that I'm I'm no longer active, mm -hmm. I take it not. I don't take it for granted. Yeah. Oh, I don't take it for granted at all. Period. 
My father yeah. went. My mm. father was in Vietnam for, for 36 months. So, hey, it's all around. <laughs> but you never served. Yes. You served. I okay. came out in '92. Okay. I came out did eight What branch are you in? Army. Army. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. But still, you're not active duty. Like you, you, you should not be walking around in this, you know. And you're not even, you don't even have like, you're, you're wearing oh, slides, my man. Is, my in my truck. Can you imagine that lad out on the front lines? The Sarge shouting at him, Hannon, lay me down some suppressor fire. I can't, Sarge, I left my gun in the truck. And my boots, and my helmet. But it's okay, because I'm nice and toasty in these fatigues. Like, still, like, it's just, it's just disrespectful, you know. Whether I'm you served or, or you didn't serve, it's just, it's, it's downright disrespectful, you know. I don't feel it is. Because of the fact of where what my his, my personal history is connected to this to this. Others may feel different, but I assure you, this. Well, I, I served, and I would, I for one, I would never decide to wear my uniform with slides. If I'm well, going to wear my uniform, I'm going to wear it as it's supposed to be a, worn. I just wore these because of a comfort me to run in here, get what I need out, the, out here, and get back in the truck. And so you being comfortable matters more than what the uniform signifies. No, it's just but that's what you just said. You said that you did this because it's easier and more comfortable for you to run inside real quick. Because it takes a while for me to lace up my shoes. So if you respect the uniform that much and you respect it enough to take the time to do it the right way. I would not disrespect it in any way. Well, you are. That's the thing. That's your opinion. But I just told you. I wear this to remind me. And to remind me of what my children, my, my three children are currently doing. Won't somebody please think of the children? This guy must have some sort of intermittent amnesia if he needs constant reminding of where his kids are and what they're doing by wearing a military uniform. And if he is telling the truth about having kids that are serving, well fair play to them, but I wonder what they would think of their father walking around wearing a uniform like that. The guy that's recording is 100% right, if you're going to wear a uniform as a mark of respect or to remember your kids, what they're doing to serve and your freedom and all that, then do it right. But in my opinion, I think this guy is just a bit of a chancer. And what my cousins and my family and my father did. So, that's just, that's, that's, that's that. Yeah. Well, uh, I gotta get going. I got. Okay. I was in the Navy. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not 100% convinced by this guy's story. He talks about not disrespecting the uniform, at the same time he's wearing a pair of slides, and the absolute effort of lacing up the boots. The whole operation seems a bit lazy to me. Not so much a G.I. Joe, more like a G.I. No Go. We're heading to Tampa in Florida next for what is a classic Stolen Valor clip. Anybody familiar with Stolen Valor will probably have seen this one before. But it's an absolutely stellar example of one of these chumps getting owned. Especially when you try to do it outside a military base, it's never going to end well. Alright, so it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Tampa, Florida. There's this jackhole over here that I pulled up and talked to for a minute. Doesn't have his veteran's ID. No self-respecting veteran be wearing his uniform than an ROTC patch and some of the other stuff you're going to go see. So we're going to have a quick conversation with him. Follow me. You're in the Army? Yes, sir. Don't worry, you're in an ROTC patch? Yes, sir. Yeah, Down here begging yeah. for money, wearing an Army soldier uniform? Yes, sir. Are you not a veteran? Yes, I am. Good. Show me your veteran's ID card. Show me your veteran's ID card. I don't have one, sir. I'm sorry. Well, take off my uniform. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's that intent on getting away because he knows he's cut out. He's going to end up getting himself flattened by a car if he's not careful. Sir, don't walk out and try to hit my car. You take that uniform off. Yes, sir. For the right of your chest, don't explain it. You take my uniform off. Yes, sir. You got the balls to stand out here. We got military people coming in and out this base every day. Sir, that takes balls. He might not actually be a soldier, but he has incredible bravery. Or is that incredible stupidity? Like, what did he think that nobody was going to call him out on any of this? Like, there's people constantly passing by that have knowledge of the military, and this phony's just standing outside trying to fake it till he makes it. 
And on top of all that, he's not just trying to get the clout, he's trying to gain financially from it. So he has the perfect recipe here to agitate military personnel. He's posing as somebody that he's not and looking for money for it as well. What was he actually thinking? It was only a matter of time before he crossed the wrong guy and the wrong guy was that gentleman whose brother, as you heard, died. People don't take kindly to lads acting the maggot in military uniforms pretending that they're somebody that they're not. And then this guy goes for the ultimate insult by trying to raise cash off the back of it as well. An absolutely disgusting display of dishonest grift in there. And I'm absolutely delighted that that guy ran him away from the entrance to the base. I see the guy was calling him out for having an RTC patch. Now I was looking up what RTC is and it looks like it's Recruit Training Command. But uh, I think this guy actually thought it meant real tough cookie because he's such a ferocious man on the battlefield. We're heading to Kentucky now where an eagle-eyed veteran has tipped off his local news network that the owner of his gym seems to have veterans plates when he shouldn't have. The TV network does some digging and discovers a major oversight in how this guy got his veterans plates. Let's take a look. Veterans earn the right to wear this uniform. They have the right to display their earned patriotism. So when people falsify military claims or embellish their records, it's taken very seriously. When 14 News received this email titled Stolen Valor on May 20th, claiming you're going to want to hear this story, we took notice. The Stolen Valor claims surround Richard Reese, a man who has identified himself to 14 News as the owner of the former Ground Zero Fitness Gym. We received these pictures, a black Camaro with a veteran designated license plate driven by Richard Reese. His Facebook page used to have several pictures of that same car. Jason Coker, a U.S. Army veteran deployed to Iraq in 2005 as a nuclear biological chemical agent specialist, used to belong to Richard's gym. Him, and he alerted us that Richard's military service might not exist. I pull up, lo and behold, what do I see? I see the Camaro that he's been driving. You know, at first it had the temporary tags. Well, now those temporary tags were replaced with Kentucky issued veteran plates. And uh, I didn't go in, I was pissed. Jason alerted us. He also alerted the organizations called Guardian of Valor and Green Beret Posers Exposed, who we learned already had run-ins with Reese in 2015. According to Guardian of Valor, they confronted Reese, who they say promised to stop wearing military gear. Um, the reason we looked at Richard, uh, he was actually approached by Green Beret Posers Exposed a year ago for claiming to be a Green Beret in the United States Army. Uh, with his age and everything and the time that he claimed to have served, there's no way he could have been a Green Beret. And I moved forward with it to find that he was still telling those lies and using that fake title to advance his business. We submitted two public records requests to the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, Missouri, with Richard's full name and birth date from public record. And both times we got these letters saying the registry showed no military service by anyone under that name. There's a sacrifice that's made to wear the uniform. And, it's, and he, he has never made that sacrifice. These pictures were sent to us by the individuals behind Green Beret Posers Exposed. They say the pictures show Mr. Reese in U.S. Army uniforms with Special Forces tags on his shoulder. Fakiness and faking, they're always, they're always faking Special Forces. 
If we can't find records of military service, how does Mr. Reese have veteran-issued license plates? You're supposed to supply paperwork proving you're a veteran. Our investigation discovered that paperwork was never filed. I came here to the Henderson County Clerk's Office with the license plate number for that black Camaro, and it wasn't until we started asking questions that the mistake was discovered. The certificate of registration for that Camaro shows a veteran issued plate, but the correct forms to prove military service weren't in the file. The vehicle is also registered to two people, a woman and another person described as the owner of Ground Zero Fitness. After we alerted them to this problem, the vehicle department supervisor where that plate was issued immediately called the number associated with it and requested the owner bring the plate back which he did. According to that supervisor, the owner said he would bring the correct military record forms in, but to this day, he never has. Well, there's an absolute shock he didn't show up with the proper paperwork. That network contacted the guy a number of times for comment, but he never responded. But his lawyer did send him this letter. And any of you guys to watch my fraud in videos are going to love this one. His attorney, John Goodridge, sent us this letter back. In it, the attorney says Mr. Reese's display of military memorabilia is protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, even if others find it unpopular. He did not confirm or deny whether Reese falsely portrayed himself as a veteran, saying only that, quote, there can be no allegation that Mr. Mr. Reese has benefited materially from any display, whether public or private, of his ownership of any military memorabilia. He's lied to everybody in the community. People sweat, they die, they cry, they fight to do this, to wear that uniform. And for someone to go and use that to make themselves look better, they're just, it's just a pathetic sad person this one's from a while back but i think it's as relevant now as it was back then as there's probably guys out there like that guy still doing this absolutely delighted for him that he got his play taken back but the fact that he wasn't forthcoming with any of this paperwork or even to comment to the network that was putting these accusations to him really does show a lot and i have to say kudos to that guy that was an actual veteran that called him out on his bs and I actually can't imagine how infuriating it is for someone that was actually deployed, that actually went out there, seen things, suffered through all of that, probably seen their buddies getting injured or maybe even killed, having to look at guys like that just posing and just making a mockery of the whole thing. If it's that important to you that the people around you or people that you meet perceive you as this great person or someone that served their country or that's given this great sacrifice, then why not actually go and do the thing and be known for something that you've actually done? No, you see, that's just the hard way of actually having to have a bit of courage and guts and a bit of go in you to go and actually get the thing done and achieve something. It's just easier to buy all the equipment and kit and then go around making up this phony story. Another thing that was kind of shocking here was the lack of oversight in him getting that veteran's plate. Like I really hope that place has got their shopping order now that that won't happen again. But in fairness to them at least they got it sorted in the end and got it taken back off him. Another bizarre thing to me is the fact that his attorney is defending this with the first amendment. I don't know what law school he went to but a quick internet search will show you that stolen valor is actually a felony. Trying to argue this under the first amendment is yet another insult to all those people that have sacrificed so much in the service of their country. I do apologise for the rant there but these guys really do annoy me. I think they might actually even annoy me more than the fraud editors. What do you think? Who annoys you more? Let me know down below in the comments and also let me know if you'd like to see more Stolen Valor videos here on the channel. Because I quite enjoyed making this video and I've come across a few more GI Jokers that we could have a laugh at. Uh, madam, tell us this, uh, what do you think of these Stolen Valor guys? I think they're absolutely disgusting. <laughs> And what I'll actually do is I'll throw up a poll on the community tab to see if people want to see more Stolen Valor videos as well. So when you're done watching this video, head over to that. I'll try and leave a link to that down below in the description as well. Head over there and cast your vote. And I want to give a big shout out to everybody that's watching this on the premiere. Thanks for stopping by and watching along with me. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're on 6,600 subs and I'm hoping to get to 7,000 hopefully by June. So let's see if we can make that happen. And as always, make sure notifications are turned on so you always get notified when we drop a new video. If you'd like to help support the channel, don't forget to check out the links down below in the description where you can do just that. Or why not consider becoming a channel member? You can find out more information by clicking the join button down below this video or checking out the link down below in the description.
And if you haven't seen our most recent Karen video, don't forget to check that out either. I'll leave a link to that also down in the description. As always, you'll hear from me again very soon with another video here on Degenerate Watch. I hope you'll join me then. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out one of the videos that should be appearing on screen now. Until next time, guys, stay safe, take care, peace.